News Biscuit, real fake news. Welcome to News Biscuit, the UK's original fake news. News Biscuit, helping Putin assassinate dissidents with love. Sorry, did I say love? I meant to say nerve agent. <laughs> I'm your host, Renfo, and I'm joined by Julian Assange's defence team. But <laughs> Bernard Castle. Good morning. And Ian Searle. He's doomed. Hello. <laughs> what, Julian? We're going to find out he was a sub-postmaster, aren't we? He's really in trouble. Yeah, if he's hoping for justice, this is yeah. not the right country to be in. No. <laughs> this month sees Joe Biden mistake nuclear launch button with his elderly panic button. <laughs> Donald Trump plans for another four year term behind bars. <laughs> and the UK plans to stop ethnic cleansing in Gaza by tutting loudly. <laughs> I, I really despaired when I watched that. I mean, if we can't agree in Westminster, what is the chance of us agreeing in Gaza? The Palestinian ambassador said he thought it was like the House of Commons at its at its lowest. But I don't think he's been paying much attention. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the speaker, what a cowardly little shit he is. Um, from what I understand, from the information I've got, what seems to have happened is that the Labour MPs went behind the scenes and put pressure on him, be it blackmail or threats, in order to sort of cut the SNP's kind of ceasefire motion. And, and I think the speaker at the time apparently had agreed to do it, provided they didn't say anything about it, that he'd given in to kind of threats and bribery. And of course, they came out straight afterwards and went, yeah, we've beaten him up. We've beaten him up bad and he's our bitch now. So they kind of left him out to dry there. And the other thing that just could have uh, come, in, come to light in the last few hours is that there was an interview done by Keir Starmer the next day where Keir Starmer denied threatening him. He said, I urged him, but I didn't threaten him. You remember the Cray brothers? They used to do yes. a lot of, they used to do a lot of urging <laughs> with baseball bats. But Keir Starmer, inadvertently, because I think he was under pressure at the time, he said, oh yeah, I just got off the phone to the Israeli Prime Minister. And then I went to go and speak to the Speaker. You're going, that sounds so bad. It yeah. sounds like you're taking direct instructions. And now Sky have taken that clip down. As Starmer's um, people have kind of complained about it, that it shows him in a bad light. And you're going, yeah, it definitely does. To and be go, honest, if you're going to take clips down because it shows him in a bad light, there's going to be nothing left of him <laughs> yeah. on the telly at all, is there? Oh, there'll be a bloopers reel, surely, Ian, at least. That, <laughs> yeah. that time he did the boxing thing, and then they, and then, that was quite funny. He's yeah. such a, because he's such a little man, you don't realise it. Both him and Sinek are, are minute, little are small fellows. Yeah, really, they're like barely five foot, the pair of them. Uh, but they normally arrange for sort of camera angles to be shot from the down up and what, what have you. It makes them look sort of strong and powerful and tall. But occasionally when they stand next to a thing <laughs> or a person, you see yeah. them in perspective and, it, you know, you go, they're minute. Funny, um, I shrunk the democracy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> there was a wonderful news item which you may not have seen that was in our region where he was doing a walk around, a meet and greet, and going around to shake people's hands. And unfortunately, he chose this pub that was run and owned by conservatives who immediately threw him out but he kept trying to get in like a <laughs> yes. cat in a snowstorm <laughs> the bizarre thing was security trying to stop him from going back into this pub as opposed to him trying to throw him out of it <laughs> they go mike he's not worth it he's not yeah. worth it <laughs> <They're> <laughs> holding him back <laughs> don't get involved <laughs> <laughs> yeah good it's always good when they meet normal people um, scares the producers out of them, which is why they're bringing in all this legislation now, aren't they? To kind of basically outlaw any possible encounter they might have with normal people. It's just appoling. I mean, you can't protest within quite a, a, is it a mile or so of the House of Commons? One particular MP, um, I think it's Paul Sweeney. He's a Scottish Labour MP. He claimed this week that his um, his offices had been stormed. Stormed, I think, was the phrase he, he used <laughs> by a, a by a baying mob of people who had then sort of and he, he said me and my team we were left cowering in our office for half an hour until the police kind of turned up and everyone of course is going this is outrageous how you know the mp being attacked in such a way how unfortunately um some people took some photographs and video footage of it <laughs> which came out a few days later and it's just four elderly people <laughs> all, that. Yeah. all of which look like <laughs> They are definitely librarians and geography teachers. They're all sort of, you know, all laid up because it's all very chilly outside. And they're, and they're all, all holding handmade placards, aren't they? Yes, yeah. uh, free Palestine. <laughs> and apparently all they did is, you can do the video, is them walking up the stairs, obviously very slowly because they're elderly, and then they get to the office and then they politely knock on the door and then they wait. 
And then the police <laughs> turn up and the police are going, what the fuck? You know, the police are like <laughs> expecting like to have riot shields and what have you. Politicians are lying little shits. Um, and, uh, and if he's going to complain, I'm afraid we've had a bit of a year of it. We've all been stormed. I can't remember their names. But there was Storm Gladys and Storm Eric. <laughs> and we've all been stormed when we didn't uh, call the police. But it'd be funny if those actual real storms were, again, just elderly people with a black card, (laughs) just slightly ruffling up your garden and then leaving politely. Right. So we've digressed massively. We haven't even got into this damn program yet. We'll get into this. Right. So the first round is news and brief where our panellists select their favourite headlines. Ian, you're up first. Chancellor to raise taxes to fund tax cuts. And who is he going to be raising taxes on here? All of us. All, all of us. And who are the tax cuts for? All of us. <laughs> no, he'll yeah. be the rich. The rich and the powerful. Well, in election year, it's always quite weird, isn't it? Because we get told prior to election year that there is no money, there is no money. And then suddenly <laughs> it's like Oprah Winfrey, isn't it? It's like, you get a million dollars, you get a million dollars. Or our energy bills are coming down as well, aren't they? Yeah, I just don't understand that. It seems like they're coming down more than I pay. I don't understand. I mean, I've not been <laughs> paying attention properly i don't none, none, uh, none of the narrative makes sense because you go the energy bills are going up because of the war with russia you're like oh okay and now energy bills are going down but there's still a war with russia you go well well which is it pick, pick one and, and actually there's another war in the middle east you know i mean that that frightens me because everyone says right we're going to get all these cars they're going to be electric and they're all you know and you think well where are we going to get the electric from who's got all the sunshine the same people who've got all the oil they're just going to be exporting <laughs> um solar energy aren't they i like the serial image that they're going to export sunshine that they look sunshine in boxes and send it to us and then we have to unwrap it where we have to wear the you know big you know dark glasses as we unwrap sunshine is it the american government or the the military over there they now talk about nuclear weapons in 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 terms of sunshine units because that is effectively boxed sunshine isn't it that they're going to drop on us much more pleasant isn't it yeah (laughs) Bomb it, takes, it makes the Oppenheimer movie <laughs> more and more like the Barbie movie, doesn't it? <laughs> Next one, Ian. Airfix modeler struggling with transfer window. Uh, <laughs> Do we need yeah. to explain that to some of our younger listeners, what Airfix models are? Are they still a thing? I think they are. Well, based on a on a sample survey here in Baldock. That's it. Is it the older generation that's still sustaining yeah. it? When that generation yeah. goes, they've got to, I don't know, turn into a vape shop like everyone else does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I remember in my childhood, very bizarre, that they didn't just limit themselves to sort of aircraft and, and vehicles. They started knocking out models of the Beatles and things, which were very bizarre and didn't look a bit like them. They're very easy because basically it was a body, a head and four arms. You know, you didn't have all the fiddly bits and they looked nothing like them. They were very strange. <laughs> Amunculous <laughs> creatures. Yeah. Do you remember that that thing, that toy you could get that was like a see-through man that with all the all the intestines in it? No, nope, that was just me. No, that was a nightmare just sounds, I had. Yes, child. it does sound. That sounds like a Hieronymus Bosch picture that you're describing yeah. there. It was a sort of see-through plastic model, and you had to put all the organs in, a bit like a, a Rubik's cube. It was it was an early form of Rubik's cube for people who wanted to be doctors. Wow, I had a sheltered childhood. I still remember that. It's been a sounds terrific. <laughs> Man found guilty of overusing commas is told to expect a very long sentence. <laughs> Aim for the stars, Oscar Sniper told. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think actors realise. I mean, you're right. I mean, actors, we like what they do. We like the product they produce. But I don't think they realise how much we hate them when they have their award ceremonies. <laughs> <laughs> we watch it because they're famous. And then this random turns up in the background and no one actually notices until afterwards. Didn't Wasn't there a YouTuber somehow got onto the stage? Was it in the BAFTAs? I think it was in the BAFTAs. Yeah, he makes a habit of this is a feature of his uh, his YouTube channel. Apparently, he turns up at places uninvited, uh, oh, as he did like Keir Starmer. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but has a better following online. Um, but was so sorry. Was this a thing where the people have gone up to accept award and what did he sort of plow in with a group? Yeah, he ran oh, across from is. the other side of the room. No one questioned it and just stood there. And then they started inviting more people from the production onto the stage. And I think excellent. Um, he just got lost in the crowd. He didn't actually do anything. And I think there's a there's a guy. Can't, I don't think it's the same guy. There's a guy who also does it with. Um, and this is harder. I think he does it with football lineups in cup Ooh. finals. He gets the full kit on. He stands. <laughs> he sta- He gets a seat. I think near the tunnel. And as the team's coming out, he just 
joins in with the lineup of the players and then they all line up, <laughs> maybe even grabs a mascot with him and he lights up, you know, one of the little kiddies. And that's much harder because if anyone can count to 11, you know, your cover's blown. <laughs> um, lots of things of him standing next to John Terry and John Terry looking at him going, oh, are you the new midfielder? Um, yeah, well, you know what the inherent danger is there, don't you? Is if they suddenly yeah. need a substitute. Oh, wait, they, right, you're on. Yeah, yeah you're what? playing. No, no, <laughs> I, no. Harry ruled out as possible organ donor. It sort of occurred to me when it was in the news that he was coming over and it said, Harry coming to this country to see the king. And I thought, and yeah, that's nice. And if, if he's in a good mood, he'll go and see his dad as well. Um, <laughs> so the implication being is that Harry might not be the son of Charles. This is I think outrageous. I think that's the subtext to that one, yeah. You need to edit that one out. I do, out of respect. Do you want another one? Uh, no, 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 yeah. no. I'd, I'd like to see you beheaded, Ian. <laughs> You're not alone. <laughs> um, Bernard, over to you. From the trainers designed for running away from legal problems. <laughs> yeah. Ah, these are the new shiny Trump trainers, aren't they? They're, they look marvellous. I've got mine are on the way already. <laughs> and they're very much in keeping with, with the Trump brand, aren't they? Because they're gold. They're gold lame. Oh, oh I, I shouldn't have ordered them then. Um, <laughs> it's going to clash with what you're wearing. <laughs> they're shiny and, and yeah, brash, and we'll be perpetually treading in shit. That's the other vibe, <laughs> yeah. I think. But it'll just slide off. Yeah, it's yeah. It won't, none of it will stick. You're absolutely yeah. right. Yeah. I mean, he is absolutely, he is Teflon. He's Teflon, but it has stained him slightly in a funny orange colour, hasn't it? <laughs> Putin states Navalny accidentally brutally cut his own head off while combing his hair. <laughs> I mean, you don't want to sort of jump the gun on, on things until you know the full facts. <laughs> And it is true this guy was quite ill and he was in a prison and people do die in sort of prisons just of natural causes. But also on the other side, Putin does like to kill people. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing that I thought was quite funny, someone online pointed out that, because the Americans were all over it in, instantly. They were like, yeah, Putin definitely did it. He definitely, <laughs> definitely did it. And everyone's going, but why are you going to wait for any facts? And the Americans go, no, no, he definitely did it. And then someone went... Yeah, well, what about Jeffrey Epstein when he died in prison? <laughs> <laughs> you guys, did, yeah. you're all like, oh, don't know how that happened. <laughs> yeah. What a mystery. So, yeah, you can't have it both ways. <laughs> Deep statement <laughs> and killings. Statements shocked by post office actions. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes. I mean, the post office bit is going on. It's going to carry on, isn't it? I mean, we used to do a thing where in the past there were big miscarriages of justice and nothing would happen. And I feel what we've done is we've moved on from now. What happens? We have we have big miscarriages of justice. We 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 talk about it and go, isn't this terrible? And then nothing happens. <laughs> this is yeah, they're into Grenfell territory. These these post office masters, yeah. popular conservatives faction to split. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the, the ironic implication that there is a popular faction yeah. is this the one that's headed by Liz Truss. Liz Truss. Yeah, Liz Truss is um is the leader of the popular conservatives. Yes, yeah, so when you think of the word popular. Liz Truss's face is not the first thing that comes <laughs> yeah. to mind. Maybe a lettuce. I can't believe she's still a thing. Often Britain is a very fragmented place and we don't often come together. But I thought we'd all come together <laughs> collectively and agreed that she's a fucking moron. <laughs> I thought that was the consensus. And now she seems to be coming back going, hello. She was speaking at some uh, uh, right wing forum in the US this week. A global conspiracy to keep people like her out of power. Which I thought, well, what's wrong with that? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, if that's what global conspiracies do, then they sound like it sounds like the House of Lords. It sounds like actually there's, there's sort of checks and balances in place that maybe global conspiracies are a good thing. I mean, she just did it to herself. I mean, some people are genuinely brought down by circumstances and enemies without and within and all that kind of thing. But she was just an idiot. She's just she's the kid. You know, she's the person who sort of you know pulls the pin out of the grenade. And throws the pin. <laughs> Did you see that wonderful caption? I think I want to say it was on Sky, but I'm not sure if it was. Where they got a picture of her on screen and they captioned it: "Liz Trust, Prime Minister, September to October 2022." Yes, <laughs> that was Channel Four. Yeah, was that, was, yeah. that was excellent trolling. <laughs> because she's an ex-Prime Minister, she gets to go to the Cenotaph every year. Yeah, she does. And, she does. She, yeah, and if she goes to the Cenotaph every year until her predicted time of death she will have spent more time at the cenotaph than she will in power <laughs> <laughs> a great stat because i mean all the prime ministers get hauled out for all sorts of things funerals and stuff like that camera pans across them and you're like <laughs> oh yeah major I remember him blair I remember him who the fuck is her <laughs> <Yeah. that? laughs> oh it's that youtuber she's on that yes channel. 
<laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yes, that's going to be an assumption in the future. Oh, that's <laughs> clever, of, clever of her to get in there <laughs> past the security guards. And yeah, I mean, she, does she get, I mean, she, she, man, she gets security as well. And oh, they do, don't they? And all the rest. Yeah. She wasn't there long enough for anyone to want to kill her. But she's the kind of person I would think would just, you wouldn't need to assassinate Liz Truss because you're the kind of person you imagine she would just like die of her own accord because she wouldn't be able to like feed herself. She wouldn't be able to get the wrapping off of like a yogurt or anything. She wouldn't be able to figure it out and would just die a shriveled husk next to the fridge. Get out of a room, can she, without no. looking confused? And I've got a cat that can't do the cat flap. And I, she, the cat looks like Liz Truss. Yeah. Those really? Yeah. It's a cat. Can't yeah. or won't? No, no. Ca- oh, no, can't, actually. And we've got four cats. So the other three just go straight through. And the other one just turns around and looks at me and goes... I know. Uh, shall we lower taxes? Yeah, um, yeah. And, and I'm like, is that the only idea you've got? And they're like, uh... Joe Biden says he is 100% fit to be re-elected Prime Minister of Belgium. <laughs> dementia is a tricky thing, isn't it? Because all of us will have known someone who suffered for dementia and, and, and looking at the three of us, we will also be going down that route quite soon, I suspect. So, you know, I, sometimes I think we're quite sensitive about kind of making jokes about it. But I think if you're president of the United States, you are fair fucking game because yeah. you are a liability. <laughs> did you see the press conference he did to, to, to deny that he was kind of suffering from dementia? No. Oh, it was it was stunning because he, 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 you know, he came in and he was very sort of bold and aggressive with the journalist and he was like, no, I'm on top of my game, I'm brilliant, I'm sharp, I'm funny, da 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 da, da. And, you know, you kind of go, he was building up a little kind of rhythm going on. You go, oh, yeah, okay, okay, well done. You've hit back, well done. And he, But he starts to leave the podium you think, good, he's done. Yeah. And then he then he starts to turn around and he does like an old man shuffle back towards the podium. <laughs> and you're like, oh, dear, what's going to happen now? And then he goes, ah, oh, you know, Gaza. And of course, <laughs> Gaza, uh, which, as we all know, is on the Mexican border. <laughs> And we're like, what are you talking about? He's like, yeah, all the Palestinians on the Mexican border. And you're like, whoa, oh my God. You know what would have been the cherry on the cake of that if he started looking around and going, man, woman, television, <laughs> camera. And then, you know. Trump's almost as bad, but I guess Trump just doesn't try to cover it up. Trump just goes <laughs> yeah. for it. But we, yeah, when Trump said one mad thing, he's on to the next and on to the next. There was an interview I saw with Trump where he was talking about the, the problems in, in Gaza and he was kept referring to something called hummus. <laughs> <laughs> and the interviewer kind of helpfully nudged him towards hummus. <laughs> he, so, str- he has got a strange way of pronouncing things, Trump, and that, and that doesn't help yeah. his cause. Uh, Is it China? He... he China, he pronounces like he's pronouncing vagina, <laughs> doesn't he? It's Gina. It's not China. He says Gina. And you're like, oh, oh, this has got interesting. Oh, no, he is talking about China. That's a shame. <laughs> our next round is True Biscuit, where our panel has to guess which is a real headline and which is a fake one. Bernard. Alabama radio station off the air after a 200-foot radio tower is stolen. <laughs> so they, they were reluctantly taken off the air because they had no radio towers left yes it's a very small radio station they only have one radio tower which they got complaints from their normal listeners their regular listeners so you don't seem to be on the air so <laughs> who, are the, who are the chief suspects in in, in the theft of the tower well, well the, the local police are still baffled and they put out um, an announcement which says if you happen to see your 200 foot radio <laughs> tower, yeah. Yeah. And if anyone's ever tried to put one of those sort of, you know, those brolly things on the beach to keep the yeah. sun off you, you know how yeah. tricky those are. Imagine a 200 yeah. foot version of that. I remember um, on a, I was well, as a young, I'm going to slightly digress here, as a, a, a very young teenager, so I think I was about th- like 13, 14, I was always mortified and embarrassed by my parents. Always, 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 always. Hmm. And we were out at a, a sort of an outdoor restaurant y thing. And they were talking a little bit loud. And I was like, oh, just the shame, the embarrassment. <laughs> yeah. oh, 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 But we had one of those big brolly things in the middle of the, the table. And I just, because I'm a teenager, just <laughs> fiddling. <laughs> I flicked the button, whatever. And the whole brolly collapsed on our heads. <laughs> And so, yes, whatever embarrassment I was feeling previously, <laughs> I had visited it a hundredfold on my family at that point. <laughs> this yeah, tower, correctly. I've got so many questions about this then, because <laughs> I'm trying to visualise 200 is still quite a 
a big size so it would have been surely would have been held up by guy ropes and things at the moment you cut one of those you are in danger of it just collapsing in one direction or another but also the amount of power that would have gone into it because i remember working with someone who worked at a, a bbc um station um some sort of installation probably secret one sending spy messages the cables connecting them were quite highly charged and owls would regularly come and sort of land on them and instantly fry this is the bbc again is it yeah this is what my my license fee has gone to fund the death of owls <laughs> given that we're going to assume that they did well they did they definitely have listeners and the moment that goes off air is not someone going to phone up and say where, where are you what have you done ah uh, you're making yeah. a false assumption there ian you see we've been doing these news biscuit podcasts for years now and we're assuming people <laughs> are listening to them but i yeah. think if we stop tomorrow it would make no difference to anyone whatsoever <laughs> it, it would it would to me it would to me I listen. <laughs> Yeah, you get your Saturday morning back is what would happen. Yeah. <laughs> that would be yeah. the knockout. You'd have a lie-in in something to yeah. do this. Well, I mean, we're down into true or, true or false territory now. I'm going to go with false because of the inherent dangers of chopping down a 200-foot tower. It's actually true. And, right. and endearingly, they've organised a GoFundMe campaign to raise $60,000 to get started again. Did they ever catch the people who did it? At the time of this report, the police were still saying, if you have a 200-foot radio tower, please, <laughs> one, please give us a call. You see, I would well, simply be going to other radio stations and checking to see if they had now multiple towers where they did only had one before. <laughs> yeah. Ian, what have you got? Northwestern University researchers have created tiny VR goggles for lab mice to study mice-enhanced behaviour research. <laughs> yeah, it's always, it's always a university in america these ones which doesn't make it more true or false it's just it, it's never a british university i just thought to point that out okay so i mean just the sheer image of my wearing vr headsets is slightly doing my my nut in here um compared to the current state-of-the-art system which simply surrounds the mice with computer or projection screens the new goggles provide a leap in advancement so it's a bit like being in is it the, the sphere in las vegas yeah Oh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So presumably the mice aren't really taking it that seriously because they're just imagining that they're at some sort of rodent U2 concert. <laughs> well, there's no bigger rat than Bono. <laughs> <laughs> but I just, I, I don't think you, you kind of un, un explained to me in the first place, why why are we doing this? Why why were they surrounded by computer screens in the first place? And why well, now VI <laughs> heads? What what are, what are mice bringing to the world of the internet? They're studying the brain. What well, we're so, studying their brain patterns, or they're studying our brain no, patterns? No, we're studying theirs. Oh so, right, okay. It, I, it, I, I in my head, I had these mice as the actual researchers who were no, just no. Are asking for better kits so they could do their job better. With the goggles, they just stick them on a treadmill. Ho hold on, these mice have so much PC monitors. They've got VR headsets. They've got treadmills. Yep. What are they? Are they premiership footballers just accumulating things? It just yeah, seems to me that you're describing a bachelor pad. All <laughs> yeah. this stuff that they've got, and there's yeah. a jacuzzi, and then they've got PlayStation 4. And well, I, I... Uh, what, what, what they plan to do the next stage is what gonna... there's a next stage. Oh, yeah. No, they yeah, yeah. no, no, Ian, there can't be a next stage because they've got better kit than I've got. I don't <laughs> want to, I don't want mice to have a better lifestyle than I have. What's yeah. the next stage? What other stuff? Are They're going to flip it. So whereas in the original experiment, the mice will be the prey, they're then going to start putting in projecting images of insects and things like that to see uh, how the brain reacts when the mice are hunting. Hunting invisible stuff that isn't there. Yeah. But it's, yeah, but it thinks, yeah, it, it thinks it's there. There's going to be one mouse just going, just, just getting all misty eyed and, and thinking <laughs> back to that lovely time when they used to just spray perfume in his face yeah. and, and make him smoke woodbines. Going, that, that, <laughs> that was just a better time. To say that, I feel like an old person complaining about kids on their mobile phones. I'm like, it was better when mice were just cut up into little pieces <laughs> I, I think it's false it's true <laughs> i assume they got a better battery life than my vr headset yeah. my yeah. vr headset lasts about 20 minutes and it's done yeah. bernard do you have one more for us pigeons suspected of being chinese spy cleared by indian police <laughs> the pigeons a spy is it the, wasn't that, that cartoon catch the pigeon what was that yes. thing? dick dastardly and muttley was that pigeon a spy i can't remember now uh was he called yankee doodle pigeon no, well technically i suppose he was he was delivering messages i mean that's probably closer to the truth 
in this pigeon, isn't it? I mean, the, the pigeon's <laughs> ability to actually spy and collect information is going to be limited to wow. where where there are seeds. And the reason the Mumbai police became interested in the pigeon is it arrived in near the port of Mumbai with two rings tied to its legs carrying words that looked like Chinese characters. <laughs> oh, God, if he was a good spy pigeon, he wouldn't have something as obvious as kind of rings <laughs> with writing on him. That's the, first, that's the first rule of being a pigeon spy. If anything, they should be looking around at birds who aren't even pigeons because a good <laughs> pigeon spy will look like a different bird entirely. They're not going to look obvious and have stuff written on them. And they arrested it. Yeah, they took it into custody. I don't know if you can arrest it. Couldn't really understand what you were saying, could it? Well, yeah, he could. He was a spy. Yeah. We've established he's a very sophisticated pigeon. I mean, to be fair, if a balloon can spy on America, I don't see why a, a pigeon can't spy on India. I mean, it... it, it it's it's not a massive leap, and at least it's... I feel we've got very low tech after the mice mm. in the world of virtual reality, and you guys are just fixated on pigeons and balloons. But the thing in the world of espionage, you know, because of tech and how sophisticated it is, and ultimately you can interrogate it and break it down. Whereas something as fundamental as a pigeon or a fundamentalist semaphore. pigeon is what you're suggesting. Yeah, yeah. You're saying he's a terrorist I, now. I, <laughs> is it one of those things where they just assumed that he was trying to organise a, a military overthrow because yeah. he kept saying the word coup? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, that, that they actually released him as well. That almost suggests that there was like some sort of judicial process and a trial. Why did you have to release him? I mean, who were they releasing him to? Don't you just keep him just on the off chance he might be a spy? I don't believe for a moment that it was a spy pigeon, but I do believe that authorities are stupid enough to do something like this so i'm going to say yes it's true once you've arrested one do you just then have to run yeah. i mean there's so many pigeons out there yeah i mean where do you even it is actually it is true um yep. and <laughs> it, is, it is blown in from taiwan uh, owned by somebody in the taiwanese pigeon fanciers society it's not the first time it's happened in india in 2020 police in kashmir arrested a, a pigeon it had flown across a, a prohibited area in the uh, on the border between uh, Pakistan and India. It seems to me that all this is confirmed is that the, the, the police in India has too much time on their hands. Yeah. <laughs> Ian, one last one. We might be able to squeeze it in. It is now acceptable to start a sentence with so, say the Oxford English Dictionary. It is now acceptable to start a sentence with so, says the Oxford English English, English Dictionary. So language experiment. I'm sorry. I guess it's not again. <laughs> So, language experts have confirmed <laughs> that if you start a defence with the word so, a sentence. <laughs> Are you sure you're going to have time to fit this in? So, I got, so, I got it. so, so, right. <laughs> it, right, back to the top. Here we go. It is now acceptable to start a sentence with so, says the Oxford English Dictionary. Uh, so, oh, my God. I was caught in a loop there that was never ending. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, you, it was the literary you, equivalent right? of the Matrix I got into that. <laughs> uh, oh, so. Also, it's a, a way of controlling people through language, I think. Maybe people just like darning. Yes. Yeah. Well, it does say, you know, that um, the sound of music will also sing so do a deer, a female deer. And the, and you can get patterns for um, dresses, dress patterns. So, so along the dotted line A. Yeah, there is a there is a huge precedent for this last year. Apparently, the word of the the Oxford word of the year was goblin mode. Goblin um, mode? Goblin, goblin mode. mode. Yeah. OK. Which is unapologetically self-indulgent, lazy, slovenly or greedy behaviour. Oh, I thought it was another word for blowjob. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, in November, the Collins Dictionary re revealed the word of the year for 2023 as AI. I mean, that's not even a word. It, it's an abbreviation. No, from the north of England, they've been using it for years. <laughs> AI. <laughs> yeah, right. until, you, until you said goblin mode. I was going to believe you. Right. I don't remember Bobby Mode being with the word of the year last Just you're not you're not down with the kids. It's quite possible <laughs> no. you missed it. Yeah, you're not, not road man enough. No, absolutely no. I'm not street. <laughs> Whenever he says some road man you know, and I know what it is, and people <laughs> say it to me all the time. But I just I don't know about you guys, I just picture a guy with a big broom cleaning the road. <laughs> it doesn't it has no gangstery type connotations whatsoever. Oh look, it's a road man. I'm thinking, yeah, he's just cleaning the road. <laughs> he's wearing a high vis jacket and he's looking really bored. <laughs> yeah, trigger from only four sources. He's the original road man. So it's false. It was an old news biscuit. <laughs> but interestingly 
the goblin mode was word of the year for Oxford last year. So that uh, was true. Bird was uh, wrong on both levels. Oh, That's yes. awful. I'm, I'm wrong. <laughs> Finally, we reach the magic eight ball. <laughs> Each of our guests is going to give us their predictions for next month's news. The government presents lengthening NHS waiting lists as a win for people who are furthering their education by learning how to Google their own symptoms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Lindsay Hoyle to be replaced by an AI smart speaker. The bad news is it will be supplied by Fuzichu. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Very good. And that brings us to the end of this episode. And I can reveal this month's winner is anyone who likes really, really old presidential candidates. <laughs> and I'd like to thank our guest, Bernard Castle. Uh, thank you. Thank you for inviting me to join in this jolly Jay. <laughs> he doesn't get out much. And uh, Ian Searle. And thank you. It's been a blast. Thanks again. And I leave you with these headlines. Nuclear powered watch, not a wind up, says inventor. <laughs> Inconsistent drafts player has checkered career. <laughs> and ozone layer accused of massive cover up. <laughs> You've been listening to News Biscuit, free to read and free to write for. We accept submissions from any budding satirist, young or old. Visit newsbiscuit.com to submit headlines, stories, and to support new writers. News Biscuit, real fake news. <laughs> I was, I was reminded. I was reminded when I read this story about coming from the northeast of England, the story of the monkey that was washed ashore from a shipwreck during the Napoleonic Wars, and the locals were baffled by the fact that because there was never present invasion at the time, of it, and so this monkey was the only survivor of the shipwreck, and it was washed ashore, and the locals tried it to uh, interrogate it. <laughs> Nearly by speaking French to it as well, because they'd never seen a monkey before. Um, and the monkey was actually um, actually put on trial for being a spy and it offered no defence. Yeah, they hung him. Yeah. yeah. And they assumed he uh, was a Frenchman because they didn't yeah, no, yeah. see monkeys before. They hadn't seen Frenchmen. And they just assumed this little hairy fella who liked oh, bananas was definitely oh. French. <laughs> <laughs>